Well, welcome to Real Talk with Jordan Riley, where the real talk does not come from me, it comes directly from God's word. And before we get started today, please consider subscribing to our channel, giving this a thumbs up, and supporting what we do here by going to realtalkwithjordan.com. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Pat Robertson, who just died recently. And we're going to look at what he taught and what he believed. And we're going to ask the all-important question, where is he now? And the answer may shock you. So are you ready? Let's go. I've got a dear friend, adopted some little kid from an orphanage down in Columbia. Child had brain damage you know, grew up weird. And you just never know what's been done to a child before you get that child, what kind of sexual abuse it's been, what kind of cruelty, what kind of food deprivation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Wow. I don't know about you. Maybe it's just me, but that was hard to watch. That this TV personality and so-called man of God could say those kind of things about adopted kids. But you haven't seen anything yet. And we're going to look at some things that will show clearly where Pat Robertson ended up. And I'm telling you right now, even though he has passed away, you need to know what's really going on. So let's dive right in. Number one, false prophecies. You got to see this to believe it. He's going to have a second term. He's going to win. Romney, Romney will win. The election. You believe that? I absolutely believe. What makes you believe that? Because the Lord told me. <laughs> well, that's why I'm glad to. I'm glad to know. I wasn't sure how you knew. <laughs> really, the Lord said that to you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I told Mitt a long time ago. I called him. I said, "Listen, I've I've, I've been in prayer. I, I, number one, you're going to win the nomination. Number two, you're going to win the general election." Recently, the Lord said he's going to have a second term. So, I, and I and I I told him. I said, "Listen, there's going to be there will be trillions of dollars coming into the economy when you're elected." trillions of dollars. So, so according to this little inside scoop that, uh, you know, Pat Robertson got right hot off the press from God himself, you know, Mitt Romney would be president and he would get a second term. All right. How about new? Do you remember Mitt Romney ever being president? Hmm. No, I don't. Not at all. That's a bold faced lie. That's a false prophecy. That's strike one. God did not say that. Romney never became president, definitely didn't get a second term. This whole God told me stuff is a bunch of nonsense and false teachers love to use it because it really keeps them from criticism and it really makes them look extra, extra spiritual. And please hear this, you guys. God is not telling you where to buy your Thanksgiving turkey or what street to turn down to or what job to take or who to marry or what girl to date. No, he is not. You're getting not getting a quotable, God told me dot, 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 dot. And I guarantee you, he is not telling anybody who is winning the next election. Why? Because everything God had to say is already written in his word. Hebrews chapter one, verses one and two, and 2 Timothy chapter three, verses 16 and 17. But if you think that was bad, get ready for this little nugget. You're going to see another thing that God supposedly told him. And uh, the next thing is the election that's coming up in just a few weeks, at which time, according to what I believe the Lord told me, the president is going to be reelected. I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying by all means, get out and vote. To, vote for whoever you want to vote for. But by all means, let your voice be heard. Wow. So hot off the press right there from God Almighty himself to Pat Robertson, Trump is going to get a second term. <laughs> no, he didn't. That didn't happen. And you can argue that, oh, the election was stolen and there was voter fraud. That's not the point. God is God. He knows everything that's going to happen from the beginning to the end. And again, Pat Robertson is a liar. He is a false prophet. And that is strike number two. But we got one more to go. And let's see if this will be strike three. Watch this. Evil people are going to try to do evil things to us and to others uh, during the last part of this year. I don't know whether it'll be in, in the fall or September or later on, but it'll be the second half somehow of 2007. There will be some very serious terrorist attacks 
the evil people will come after this country and there's a possibility that, that uh, uh, K, not a possibility, a definite certainty that chaos is going to rule and the Lord says the politicians will not have any solutions for it. It's going to happen and uh, uh, I'm not saying necessarily nuclear, the Lord didn't say nuclear, but I do believe it'll be something like that, that'll, that'll be a mass killing, possibly millions of people. Did you see how vague that was? I mean, really? Does that sound like a prophetic word? Does that sound like something God would say? Bro, what are you talking about, man? You know, but that's how false prophets are. You know, I just sent something. There's going to be a breakthrough in this year. And, and, you know, I'm not sure when this is going to happen. It could be from like September to December. What's wrong with you people? That's a bunch of nonsense. When God speaks, God speaks. And he's very clear. He's very specific. And it always, 100% of the time, comes to pass. That's why God cannot lie. And I, I, you see right there that that was completely a false prophecy. This never happened in 2007. You can go back and look at the history books. There was no nuclear attacks. There was no mass killings. There was no mass destruction in 2007. Pat Robertson is a con artist. And again, strike three, you're out. Now, the Bible has a lot of things to say about this, and I want to go through it really quickly. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22. It says this, but the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. And if you say in your heart, how may we know the word that the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is a word that the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You need not be afraid of him. If, you, if we lived in Old Testament times, Pat Robertson wouldn't have just recently died. He would have died a long time ago because he was a false prophet who claimed to speak for God, but it did not come true. God did not say those things. That's why, again, according to 1 John 4, 1, we are to test everything against God's word because so many false prophets and false teachers are out there among us today. Also, Jeremiah 23, verse 16, it says this, Thus says Yahweh of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They are leading you into vanity. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of Yahweh. Again, that's exactly really describing Pat Robertson. And many other false prophets are like, oh, God told me, thus saith the Lord. Again, I was a false prophet. I know how it goes. It tickles ears, it pumps people up, and it leads them straight to hell. Number two, Pat Robertson endorsed and supported many false teachers. You need to see this. Well, it's a pleasure to welcome back my dear friend, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth, it's so good to see you again. Thank you. Happy birthday, sir. Thank you, my brother. My happy birthday gift is to Operation Blessing to to help in all of this oh, and all you, bless your you, heart. You, you and your people are doing to, to, uh, well, you, you are so generous and I just thank God and this will help bless people all around the world. You are so generous, Kenneth. God bless you. That's why God's blessed you so much. Hey, this is a lot. You know, I was figuring it out today. Yeah. We go back 45 years. Is that right? Mid seventies. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So he's good friends with Kenneth Copeland for 45 years, nonetheless. Lord, have mercy. This is terrible. This is a violation of scripture. And don't minimize it saying, well, you know, he didn't really, it wasn't false teaching. No, he is violating God's word. The Bible is very clear. God had very specific things to say about how we are to handle and what we are to do and not to do with false teachers. Ephesians 5.11 says, do not partner with them but rather expose them. Romans 16 verses 17 and 18 says to mark and avoid them, to warn the body of them, not to celebrate them, not to lead them to people who are gullible or maybe weak in the faith and saying, hey, this is an amazing guy. No, Pat Robertson led people into the dangerous jaws of false teachers and wolves in sheep's clothing. Here's also a picture right here of him with his good friend, Billy Graham who many of you have seen my video about Billy Graham being a major false teacher who led millions of people to hell. Again, this is absolutely very, very troubling, you guys. 
And he actually, you know, uh, Pat Robertson started CBN News and the 700 Club, both of which are heretical, absolute nonsense. Tons of false teaching, tons of false doctrine, interviewing and celebrating false teachers. It was a cornucopia of garbage. And that's really terrible. You have to know there's so much heresy on that, that those both of those programs that it violates Galatians 1 verses 6 through 9. You know, they were teaching a different gospel, a different Jesus, different theology. It was wrong. And again, this is what makes Pat Robertson a false teacher. And number three, he had very, very messed up theology. And no, I'm not kidding. Let's look at two things that he did. He taught the word of faith theology. And for those of you who don't really understand that, you might want to dig into this because the word of faith theology is absolute pure heresy. It's that we have the power. You know, we're little gods. When I read in the Bible where he says, I am, I just smile and say, yes, I am too. We have authority. We can speak things into existence. It's an elevation of us and a demotion of God. It's literally almost treating God and the Holy Spirit like they're our personal servant. We can decree and declare. We can demand things to happen. We can speak things to into being. No, that is a twisting of God's word. Proverbs 18, 21. It says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. But that is not talking about us being able to do something. It's talking about how our words can hurt people. They can bless people. But it's not talking about killing and about life. Otherwise, I'd like to see Pat Robertson go into a, you know, a cancer ward and use his big powerful words to heal everybody. Just clear it all out. Let's, ha let's have everybody get up and get out of their beds and go. What did he say? Hey. Oh. <laughs> that can't happen, doesn't happen, won't happen. Also, they twist and mangle. Uh, Romans 4.17, speaking things that are not into existence. They leave off the part that God is the one who does it. Or they'll say, because God did it and we're little gods, that we can do it. That is a lie. Again, show me the proof and you can't. And this is what he did many, many times. If you watched his stuff, you watched him on TV, it would always be like, well, God is showing me that there's a lady with a hip problem and she's being healed right now. And there's a guy with throat cancer and he's being healed right now. Come on now, dog. Show me the proof. Show me the doctor's evidence of before and after this happened. They never did once. They couldn't. It was a fraud. And also, finally, they taught the prosperity gospel, which is pure, absolute, unbiblical Jargon. I mean, it's, 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 it's heresy, you guys. Saying that God wants to prosper us, that we should be healthy and wealthy. It's always God's will to heal and that we should be living large. Do you notice the people who teach the prosperity gospel are the only ones living large? Yes, because they're preying on you. Send us money and God's going to give you a hundredfold blessing. You're going to have that overthrow and you're going to have that breakthrough. If you sow a big seed, <laughs> no, you have an empty wallet. You're left hurting. You're left doubting God. Why? Because those charlatans and con artists took your money. Jesus said he had no place to lay his head. He wasn't living large. He didn't have land and houses and properties. No. And Paul said in Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 12, he said that we are to be content whether we have much or whether we have little. And please understand this, not one verse in the Bible, Jesus or the apostles never promised prosperity to any of us, never. He promised that we would be hated by the world, that we would face trials, that we'd be persecuted, but he also promised that he would never leave us or forsake us. He promised that he would come again to get those that are his, that he has saved. But please understand prosperity, nowhere found in the Bible as a promise from God. See, it's sad that Pat Robertson died in his sin. He led many astray, tons. And because of his false theology, his false partnerships, and his false prophecies, he is in hell today.